I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord and let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. And he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man cried. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that takes refuge in him. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doers of his word. May we pray. Gracious Father, it's once more that you let us come before you, Father, just to say thank you. Thank you. Sing praises in your name, Father. Father, we thank you because you've looked beyond our faults and you see our needs, Father. And Father, you just love us with a, a steady hand, Father. And we just, we just appreciate it so yeah. much, Father. Yeah. We, we just can't thank you enough. Thank you. But Father, we'd like to ask that you take this offering, this humble offering, yes. and you use it for the uplifting and glorification of your kingdom. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Father 
knows what you need. Again, your father yes, sir. Yes, sir. knows what you need before you ask. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done.
you kept me from all hurt, harm, and danger. All I can say is thank you.
for the things you've done. Grateful for the victories we won. We can go on. We just want to say thank you today. Thank you. Because you've been so good to us. Yes, you have. Old folks crying we used to say you've been better to us than you've been to us. Yes, yes. We just thank you. Pray now that you forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from unrighteousness. Stand in and speak to me. Help me, Lord. With the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, my strength, my redeemer. My yes. responding yes. prayer in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, good morning to the mount. Share in another Lord's Day in worship. Yes. Yes. A lot of people laid down last week. Yes. Well, didn't well, wake up. Well, yes. Grateful that He's given us another chance. Yes, yes. To see another day. Yes. Teach us today. Deacons, Bill, Brother Thomas, Brother James, Brother Tate. Pray for Reverend Gibson. He's preaching, preaching assignment today. Amen. Amen. Ask him where he is. Amen. Uh, to all of you, Malala family, friends. Again, it's good to be here. Yes. We want to do part two. Of last week out of Luke 15. Yes. Yes. Talked about it's time to go home last week. Pick up in Luke 15, 25 through 32 today. Luke 15, 25 through 32. And then Sonita, raise your hand. She's going down into the liquid grave today. Son, thou art ever with me. All and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. Yeah. Yeah. For this thy brother was dead and is God. alive again. That's right, sir. And was lost yeah. and was yeah. found. Yeah. 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 I just want to talk about a day in the life of the prodigal brother. Yeah. Yeah. The prodigal son last week. Right. Right. I'm talking about the prodigal brother. We'll do some review from last week as we move forward. This is one of the most famous of Jesus' parabolic messages. It's one parable in three movements. It's a story about a lost sheep, yes, sir. lost silver or coin, and a lost son. Yeah. The parable of the lost sheep, it is the son who we see as the active member of the Godhead. The story of the coin is the Holy Spirit at work. But in the parable of the two sons, it's the father who predominates, as he has mentioned, no less than 12 times. So in this last movement of this parable, a certain man has two sons, and both of them are lost. Many times we've heard the story of the prodigal son, both preached and taught. We followed him as he moved away from his father's house. We watch him as he ventures out into the far country and 
and as he enjoys himself with riotous living. Mm -hmm. We can just see him now mm -hmm. walking down the street with his pants hanging down. Yes. <laughs> Sagging, if you will. Yes. Trying to be cool. Yes. He got on his Dr. Dre beats, yes. studio wireless, bumping in his ears, listening to Drake, yes. Cardi B, Bankroll and Freddie, a uh, bankroll Freddie and Megan the Stallion. Uh, in our day, it would be Earth, Wind, and Fire. The old James, Cool in the Gang, Temptation, Shy Lights, Dramatics. You know. And then some other days, Sister Addie would be the Ink Spots for your heart. But we can just see him. Laid back at the club yeah. with wine, women, and song. Yeah. We follow his every move because he reminds us so much of us. Yeah. And then we most especially enjoy the reunion when he comes to himself. Yeah. The hog pen and his reasoning ability returns. The late Dr. D.D. Chastain of Dayton, Ohio, at the Mount Carmel Church said that he, he dropped the pail, hopped the rail, and hit the trail on his way back to the Father's house. We enjoy when he comes back to his senses and makes his way back to his Father's house. We're excited when the Father kills the fatty cat. And we're glad when there's music and dancing. The Father runs out to greet him and hugs him and he smothers him with kisses. And the Father could care less that the sun is covered with the stench and the stink of the life lived in the home. Well, well. He's just excited that the sun has come on. Yeah. And then we stop at that story because we enjoy uh, the story about the adventures of the young man who returns home to an expectant and loving father. But the elder brother, who is really one of us, because mm -hmm. everybody here has not been in the far country. Not everybody here has smoked weed. Well, well. Not everybody here knows when you say joint, what you're talking about. They I think about that back in their knees. <laughs> not everybody here has partied all night long. Oh. Uh, not everybody here has been on drugs. And so most of us here don't have that testimony. Yeah, right. Most of us have been in church all of our lives. Mm -hmm. We've been in Sunday school and Bible study, BTU and BY. To you, and the list goes on the Starlight Band, and all that. So, we know nothing about staying out drunk all night. We don't know nothing about drugs. We don't know what a roach is except it's climbing on a wall. <laughs> then, when you turn the lights on in the kitchen, they all run for cover. We don't know what crack is unless it's a hole in the wall. We don't know what pot is unless it's something you cook in. So, so we don't have the testimony of the younger boy. Well, we, we've been in church so long that we forgot what it's like to be lost. Well, so, so I want to talk to the elder brothers in the house today. Well, and we be honest, many of us see ourselves in this story. That's yeah. right. The younger boy was lost as a pleasure seeker. Okay. He gave himself to wild, riotous living. That's right. mm. But the elder brother was as lost as a moral. Because while his, this younger boy enjoyed pleasure, the older boy lived to maintain appearances and perceptions. Mm -hmm. One was a pleasure seeker. One was a moralist. And in both situations, they were lost. Mm -hmm. well, because for the younger boy, he's lost in the far country. As we said last week, is a geographical location. But the elder boy is lost in the house. Yeah. That's a spiritual condition. Yeah. Oh, it's dangerous to be lost in the house. Uh, lostness is an equal opportunity entity. Yes, Doesn't matter if you're in the house or out of the house, if you're lost. You're lost. One is lost to pleasure, he seeks, all he seeks is pleasure. Mm -hmm. And one is lost as a moralist, and all he wants to do is make sure he doesn't look like his younger brother. Well. But the fact is, he's still lost yes, sir. just the same. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Now, there's two ways to be lost. Well. One way is to break all the rules and do everything you please. Uh -huh. yeah. And the other way is to keep on rules and, and, and try to be good and still be lost. Yeah. 
Many people don't understand this because they equate being good with being saved. Yeah. But if you're only good, uh, uh, but if you're only uh, uh, being good to earn favor with God, you're lost. That's right. Oh. Keep all the rules so that God will have to hear your prayers and bless your life. You're still lost. Yeah. Because the gospel is not be good and you'll be saved. That's right. The gospel is be saved and you'll be good. That's right. All right. You can't be good by merely coming to church. Yeah. Because if coming to church to make you a Christian, then climbing a tree will make you a squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be born again. Yeah. And there's none good but the Father. That's right. So let's look at this elder brother and see if we can see ourselves in this story. Work it, work it. Verse 25, first of all, we see his respectability. The elder son was in the field. Being the elder son made him the leader. Being in the field made him a laborer, but he was still lost. He was a leader and a laborer, but he was still lost. Now the younger boy says in verse 12, give me my portion of the goods that fall to me. And it also says he divided unto them his living. So both sons got paid that day. But the young one takes his father's property and liquidates it into cash and takes off for the bright lights and the broad avenues. According to uh, Jewish tradition, an older boy had the responsibility to stop his younger brother from disrespecting okay. his father. Okay. All right. All right. Because as the elder son, he's the leader in the family. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't even come around when his younger brother leaves. We see no sign of him when his young, younger brother disrespects his father. The older boy is supposed to step in and put a stop to it. Yeah. But he wants him to leave. And the reason he wants him to leave is because in Deuteronomy 21 it says that he's going to get the rest of what his brother didn't take, plus his father's money, and all of it will be coming to him. Back it up, back so he doesn't even bid his brother farewell. Mm -hmm. He lets his brother take his journey and disrespect his father without even opening his mouth. Right, right. I don't think any of us would stand for our brother or sister or stranger to insult our parents. Mm -hmm. You insult my parents, you cross the line. Yeah. Right. Remember growing up, we used to play the dozen. I might, I might let you get away if you talk about my dad. But, 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 but I give you a little wiggle room when you talk about my dad, but don't talk about my mom. Right. You're looking for a fight when you start talking about mom. Right. And, and so you might as well get your sleeve rolled up and get ready to get it on. But, but, but in, in the text for today, the older boy is nowhere around to tell the younger one that he's making the wrong choice. Because uh -huh. he probably wants him gone in the first place. He's a lady. He's in the field when he hears music and dancing. Yeah. He's in the field working. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing, but doing it without a pure heart. 